after sending the request if our thread is waiting for the response then we can call it as a synchronous communication right then what is asynchronous communication after sending the request my thread will not wait for the response that is called asynchronous communication so here in the spring boot there are two components available one is rest template and another one is web client one is rest template another one is web client rest template is a predefined class it is a predefined class and it supports only synchronous communication okay now we are having web client interface web client is a interface it supports both synchronous communication as well as asynchronous communication now so this rest template available from spring old versions onwards but web client introduced in the spring 5.x version onwards once the spring 5.x is released they told that don't use rest template whatever you can do by using rest template same thing can be done by using web client also web client is a interface that supports both sync communication as well as asynchronous communication can you tell me when we need to go for synchronous communication when we need to go for asynchronous communication ha huh. i want to make two calls i want to access two different apis my application is a client application it has to access some data from api 1 and some data from api 2 if second request depends on the response of the first api then i should go for synchronous communication if these two requests are independent then i will go for asynchronous communication got my point synchronous communication and asynchronous communication perfect in the last session we developed our clients web client dot get dot uri dot retrieve dot body to mono dot subscribe what is the meaning of dot subscribe async call whenever the response comes then i want to handle that response by using this method here i will specify application handle response that means whenever we call this method it will send the request it won't wait for the response it will continue the execution when the response comes then that will be handled by this method whatever the response is coming from the api that response will be given to this method as a parameter this method will execute some logic currently i am writing print that response on the console in the interview they will ask you a question i want to send you a request along with a headers and a body so here i am sending a post request i am sending post request in this post request i am sending body what is the meaning of a body payload whatever the data that we want to send from one application to another application that we will send as a body how to send the header how to send the header we discussed previously http request is divided into multiple parts right request will be available response will be available request header request url request body in this request i am having body and i am having url am i sending any header in the request or i am not sending any header in the request i am not sending any header in the request how to send the header okay here you can specify dot header there is a method called dot header method is available i want to specify accept i want to specify accept what is the accept value i want only json data i want only json data like this you can send header also in the request header accept application slash json what is the meaning of accept application slash json i am expecting only json response once i get the json data i will convert that json data into my ticket object clear like this you can send header also sending request with a header and a body using web client 
how to send request header and body how to send request header and body using web client body means body value method is available directly whatever the data you want to send in the body you can pass that as a parameter body value body value so here web client dot post i want to make a post request dot uri to which url you want to make a request if url having a path parameter i can send values like this in the path parameter if url is expecting query parameter i can pass one map object in that map i need to set my keys and values and i need to pass that map for the query parameter if it is a path parameter direct value you can send for that so in this post request i don't need any path parameter or query parameter that's why i'm passing direct url if you want to set the header dot header method we need to use key and value dot body value what is the meaning of dot body value it is used to set the data in the body take the response convert into object wait for the response like this you can send request header and body using web client all right fine guys next one in the last sessions in the web mvc we understood how to handle exceptions in the web application how many ways we can handle exceptions in the web application two ways what are the two ways local handling and global handling what is the difference between local handling and global handling what is the difference between local handling and global handling ha huh. if your exception is specific to particular controller then we can go for local handling if i want to handle exception in the whole application then we need to go for global handling concept okay now previously whenever exception occurred we are used to return one error page we used to display some error page some problem occurred please try again after some time but this is a rest api in the rest api error page will be available error page will not be available error pages available or not available if it is a web application then web pages will be available we can create one error page whenever the response occurred whenever the exception occurred then it should go to that error page now let us see how to handle exceptions in the rest api how to handle exceptions in the rest api very 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 important guys file new starter project so i am going for 30th application rest api exceptions rest api exception handling good click on next web dependency dev tools lombok i don't need any time leap because i am going to develop a rest api in that rest api if any exception occurred i want to handle that exception go to next click on finish click on finish check the pom.xml there is no special dependency just a web starter and dev tools and lombok then starter test dependency is available perfect refresh this let me create one rest controller new class rest controller let me take it as demo rest controller i am taking this as demo rest controller so to represent this class as a rest controller i am using at the rate rest controller annotation let me write one method public string get some welcome message okay string message is equal to welcome to rest api development welcome to rest api then return message i want to bind this to a get request method at the rate get mapping slash welcome at the rate get mapping slash welcome my rest api is ready with a rest controller there is a method method is binded to get request slash welcome is the url pattern okay 
now refresh right click run as boot application application is running go to browser and make a get request postman is not required guys it is a simple get request so let me go to localhost colon 8080 slash welcome i'm getting the response welcome to rest api right good now let me create some problem in the rest api let me create some problem in the rest api i is equal to 10 by 0 integer i is equal to 10 by 0 perfect now make a request then what happened i'm getting white label error i'm getting white label error status code 500 is coming internal server 500 divided by 0 okay but whenever exception occurred in my rest api i don't want to send like this i want to give a meaningful json saying that exception occurred this is the reason this is the time when the exception occurred i want to provide some information whenever exception occurred in my application so for this we need to go for exception handling global handling or local handling global handling or local handling right there is a single controller local handling but in the real time we can have multiple controllers so i need to go for global handling first of all let me create one binding class guys or else let me create a package with a name called exception so here i'm taking one class with a name called error info so what error info user defined class i'm taking in this class i'm taking private string code private string message private local date private local date exception date exception occurred something like this right code message date i'm taking three variables in my class for these three variables i need setters and getters for that i'm going for at the rate data so whenever exception occurred in our application then i need to send what is the exception code why exception occurred when exception occurred or else instead of date i can take when also that represents when exception occurred in our application this is our error info class class name can be anything it is just a binding class to send exception details to the client application now go here then let me create handler class new class app exception handler app exception handler this is my global exception handler how to represent this as a global exception handler by using at the rate rest controller advice by using at the rate rest controller advice now let me write one method public response entity public response entity error info so i want to return error info class object what is error info it will represent exception details app exception handler public response entity error info handle arithmetic exception or else handle exception whatever you want handle exception handle exception i will take exception object as a parameter right now let me go for e dot get message what is the reason for this exception why this exception is coming i'm going to specify that e dot get message exception message will be available now let us create the object for error info error info info is equal to new error info info dot set code in project for every exception they will provide one exception code suppose if it is sbi application sbi exception 003 something like that so for database exceptions one code will be available for client mistakes one code will be available for null point exception one code will be available for web service exception one code will be available they will tell you 
which code we need to use for which exception. Here I'm taking some exception code like this. Then info dot set message. Info dot set message that is exception message. Then info dot set when this exception occurred. I will go for local date dot now. Local date dot now. I'm setting my exception data. What this method should return? Response entity of error info. Now let me return that. Return new response entity of new response entity of info comma HTTP status dot internal server error. What is the meaning of internal server error? 500 status code. That means there is a problem in our code execution. There is a problem in our code execution. See here. I am having my rest controller. Wantedly I am creating some exception in the method. 10 by 0. That means it is going to throw arithmetic exception. Whenever exception occurred, I want to send these values to the client. This is the data that I want to send to the client whenever exception occurred in my application. Then to handle the exception throughout the project, I am going for global exception handler. At the rate rest controller advice is available. App exception handler handle exception. Handle exception, this method should be executed whenever exception occurred. Exception handler value is equal to exception dot class. Value is equal to exception dot class. So when this method will be executed guys? When this method will be executed? Whenever exception occurred in the project. Which exception? Any exception. Because I am using exception dot class. What is the meaning of exception dot class? What is the meaning of exception dot class? Uh, for any exception, that is a super class for all the exceptions, right? So I'm creating error info object. I'm setting the data for that. And I'm returning that as a response body with the status code as 500. What is the meaning of 500? It is a server error, right? Refresh. Run as boot application. Refresh. Run as boot application. Clear the console. Now go to browser. Make the request. Now what happened? Are we getting white label error? Are we are getting proper message? Code. This is the exception code. This is the exception message. This is when the exception occurred. All right. Now let me send same request from postman. Then you will get more clarity. Let me send the same request from the postman. Localhost colon. 8080 slash welcome. Now see what is the response I'm getting? Exception code, exception message. When that exception occurred, 500 internal server error. When we are sending the exception, not only date, time is also important. At what time, which date the exception occurred? How to send the time in the response? To send the time in the response, instead of local date, I will go for Local date time. Local date time I am going to take here. In this handler, I am going to specify local date time dot now. That will give you date plus time when that exception occurred in the application. Perfect. Let me send the request. Now can you see here when this exception occurred? Date plus 1746 nothing but at 546 this exception occurred. So exception code, exception message, and when that exception occurred, I'm providing that information. Observe carefully. This is my rest controller here. This is my rest controller here. I'm creating one exception manually. Whenever this exception occurred, it will check. Do we have any exception handler in our application? It will check. Do we have any exception handler in our application? Yes, we are having rest controller advice we are having rest controller advice public class app exception handler now in that there is a method which is responsible to handle exception in our project wherever exception occurred then this method is responsible to handle that exception right 
So why that exception occurred? I'm taking exception object as a parameter. That exception dot get message. Whenever exception occurred, this method will be called. For that method, exception object will be passed as a parameter. Are we calling this method? Dispatcher servlet will call this method. Are we calling that method? Or dispatcher servlet will call this method? We are not calling that method. It will be called by dispatcher servlet. It will pass exception object as a parameter. E dot get message. I got the exception message. Error info. What is this error info? What is the error info, guys? Is it a predefined class or is it a user-defined class? It is a user-defined class. Now, I am creating the object. I am setting the data. I am returning the object in the body with the status code. So, when exception occurred in the application, it will send proper message to the client. Boss, exception occurred. This is the code. This is the message. This is the date and time when that exception occurred. What is the status code we are getting? 500. Okay. So we are able to understand how to handle that exception and how to implement that global exception handling. Okay. Now, let me create one more REST controller, guys. New class. Let me create that as user REST controller. I'm creating user REST controller. I want to represent this class also as a REST controller. REST controller. REST controller. Let me write one method. Public string get user name. Integer user ID. I need a user ID. If you give the user ID, then I will give the user name. If you give the user ID, then I will give the user name. So what I will do is, if user ID equal to 100, if user ID equal to 100, I will return the name as some John. All right. Now, else if, else if user ID equal to 200, I will give the name as some Smith. Perfect. Okay. So now here, here, else, else, I want to throw one exception. Throw new exception saying that user not found. Throw the exception saying that user not found. Say that user not found. Are you clear? So if you give the user ID as a hundred, it will return John. You can get it from the database also with that ID record is available or not. I'm not making any DB call. If a user ID equal to 100, I will return John. If a user ID equal to 200, I will return Smith. Else, I will throw the exception user not found exception. Clear? Now here, whenever user ID not available, I don't want to throw this exception. I want to throw user defined exception okay you know how to create user defined exceptions in the core java we learned what is user defined exception let me create one user defined exception that is user not found exception user not found exception so this class is going to extend properties from runtime exception it will extend the properties from runtime exception. One constructor. Then let me go for another constructor. Okay. What I have done, guys? What is this class? What is this class? It is a normal Java class or it is an exception class? Exception class. I'm creating one user defined exception. What is this class name? User not found exception. So 
in my application i want to throw this user defined exception i want to throw this user defined exception observe in the real time most of the scenarios we are going to create user defined exceptions i have created one class with a name called user not found exception it is extending the properties from runtime exception in this i am declaring one zero param constructor one parameterized constructor this parameterized constructor is taking string as a parameter i am calling super class constructor what is the super class for my class runtime exception that means runtime exception constructor will be called good in this rest controller if you give user id as a 100 let me go for get mapping slash user then i will go for user id how user id will come to this method is it a query param or is it a path param are you sure query param or path param it is a path param at the rate get mapping slash user slash user id after user whatever the value is coming that is called as a path variable how to read the path variable in our method how to read the path variable in our method to read the path variable in our method we will go for at the rate path variable annotation at the rate path variable annotation all right what is the purpose of path variable to capture the path variable that is coming in the request url okay that is used to capture the path variable that is coming in the url read the data from the path variable and give to our method parameter then compare if it is 100 give the value as a john if it is 200 and give the value as a smith if the value is not 100 not 200 then what this method will do it is going to throw user not found exception it will throw user not found exception do we have any handler for that exception do we have any handler for that exception yes we have that because user not found is also one type of exception right so this method will be called or will not be called this method will be called or will not be called will be called let us check that refresh run as boot application clear the console clear the console go here slash user slash 200 i'm sending 200 in the url then what is the response i'm getting smith i'm getting as a response if i send 100 then i'm getting john as a response that is working as expected let me send 300 let me send 300 what is my logic if it is 300 what is my logic if it is 300 throwing user defined exception if our id is not matching with the if else condition then it will go for this else part then i will throw user not found exception okay send the 300 in the request then what happened then what happened guys so code is coming message is what user not found when this exception occurred 500 internal server error but here there is a problem it is a internal server error or it is a client problem is it a internal server error or it is a client problem huh. what is meaning of internal server error ah uh, code is not executed here code is not executed or id is incorrect id is incorrect so our application giving wrong status code to the client what client will think there is a problem in the api client will think that status code is 500 status code 500 means api side there is a problem but actually api side problem is there or request problem is there client is giving the incorrect id client is giving the incorrect id so now i need to create another method for that exception got it so let me take this let me take this i here when this method should be executed handle user 
handle user not found exception user not found exception user not found exception this method should be executed when user is not found code i am giving as 001 http status that that i am going to specify bad request what is that guys bad request what is the meaning of bad request 400 status code will be available what is the meaning of 400 status code what is the meaning of 400 status code that is a client side mistake 400 status code nothing but it is client side mistake are you clear any confusion no good fine so there are two exception handler methods are available in our project one is used for generic exception any arithmetic exception any null pointer exception any sql exception any type casting exception that will be handled by this method what is the purpose of this method what is the purpose of this method it is used to handle user not found exception in our application user not found exception is a user defined exception whenever this condition is not satisfied then it will throw user not found exception when user not found exception occurred then this method will be executed it will return exception info with the status code as 400 so this method will return 400 status this method will return 500 status what is the difference what is the meaning of 400 and 500 400 means it is a client side mistake 500 means it is a server side mistake are you clear perfect let's try this let me run my application it is already running go for 8080 slash welcome 8080 slash welcome send the request what happened what is the status code i'm getting 500 what is the meaning of 500 server side there is a problem server side there is a problem local host colon 8080 slash welcome so code is coming message is by zero you are dividing by zero that's why exception occurred when that exception occurred including timing also we are sending what is the status code 500 now let me go here slash user slash user slash 100 then what happened my application is working as expected i'm getting john as a message if i go for 101 if i go for 101 what happened methods are executing as expected or not when user not found exception occurred first method is executing when the arithmetic exception occurred second method is executing user not found exception what is the status code 400 what is the meaning of 400 it is a bad request it is a bad request if i give as a hundred i'm getting actual response that means when my method is executed successfully this is the response i'm getting okay if the condition is not satisfied then it will throw user not found exception when i throw user not found exception it will check is there any handler exception handler available or not available handler is available so now this method will be executed what this method is doing creating the error info sending the response with the bad request as a status code when you go for welcome it will throw arithmetic exception when arithmetic exception occurred is there any handler for arithmetic exception or there is no handler for arithmetic exception no handler for the arithmetic then it will go for generic exception when arithmetic exception is not available then it will go for generic exception this method will be called for arithmetic exception this handler will be executed for user not found this handler will be executed for client meaningful exception we are going to send for the client we are sending meaningful exception data we should not send white label error we need to provide meaningful exception with the meaningful status code when some problem occurred in our rest api so this is called 
exception handling in the restful services so there is no ui what is the difference between web application exception handling and rest api exception handling come on guys what is the difference between web application exception handling and rest api exception handling in the web application error page will be displayed when exception occurred error page will be displayed but in the rest application in the rest application no error page direct we are sending the response in the json format whatever the error is coming that we are converting into json data that json data we are sending as a response to the clients are you guys clear perfect Perfect. Good. Look at this. This is my controller. It's very simple, straightforward. There is no logic in the controller. There is a method available. Method is binded to get request. Here, manually, wantedly, I'm creating one exception. Now, here I am having app exception handler, rest controller advice. What is the meaning of this rest controller advice? What is the meaning of rest controller advice? Global exception handling rest controller advice. That means it is a global exception handling. Okay. Then after I'm writing one method that is at the rate exception handler value is equal to user not found exception dot class. What is the meaning of this annotation? What is the meaning of that annotation guys? This method is responsible to handle user not found exception in our entire application in our entire application, wherever user not found exception occurred, then this method is responsible to execute. What is the logic in this method? I'm taking that exception object as a parameter. Then I am getting the message of the exception. I'm creating error info. What is the error info? What is error info? Error info is a user defined class. Error info is a user defined class to set the data to send for as a response. I'm setting some code in the project. Our management will decide for which exception, which code we have to use. For which exception, which code we have to use will be decided by our management. Set exception code and set exception message. How I am getting the message? Object dot parameter. Parameter is available now. E, e dot get message. That exception message I'm getting. When, what is the meaning of when? Date and time when exception occurred. Then I'm returning response entity, body, comma, status code. I want to send this exception data in the body with the status code as bad request. Bad request means client problem. If client is giving invalid user ID, then I'm saying user not found exception, right? What about this method? What is this annotation representing? What is this annotation is representing at the rate exception handler value is equal to exception dot class. Okay. Whenever exception occurred in our application, then this method is responsible for the execution. This method is responsible for the execution, right? I'm setting the exception code here. I'm giving internal server error rest controller here. I'm writing some logic with my path parameter value. If it is 100, give the actual response. If it is 200, give the actual response. Else, throw the exception. How to handle predefined exceptions in the REST API? How to handle user-defined exceptions in the REST API? I'm creating one user-defined exception class. Okay, based on the situation, I'm throwing that user-defined exception. For that user defined exception, there is a handler method is available. It is 100% interview question for experienced people. How to handle exceptions in the REST API? Could you please tell me 
how you are handling exceptions in your project you need to tell that we are using global exception handler by using rest controller advice we are creating user defined exceptions in our application whenever user defined exception occur my rest controller advise method will be executed for which exception that method should be executed we will configure by using exception handler and we are having a error info class for that we will set the code message the date and i will return that response to the client whatever the coding we have done same thing you need to tell in the interview how you are handling exceptions in your project it is how you are handling exceptions in your project how you are handling security in your project these are two mandatory questions in every interview how exceptions you are handling how security you are handling as of now we did not discuss about the security part clear good any questions anyone on this exception handling part in the rest api concept already we know how to handle local exceptions global exceptions in the web application same concept but a slight change in the web application we will send error page for the client but in the rest api error message we will send to the client that's it this is the exception class name whatever the exception class is available whatever you are throwing same parameter you need to take then already it is available right it is will come generic if you don't write this still this will work it will work because it is a super class for all the exceptions but for user not found i want this status code okay for this exception i want this status code there is a difference in the status codes
completed guys fine good so with this we are done with our restful services development we are done with our restful services development first we discussed about what is distributed application can you tell me what is distributed application one application which is communicating with another application that is called as distributed application what are the distributed technologies are available for the rmi ejb soap and restful services we learnt about restful services so in the rest architecture two actors will be available one is a provider another one is consumer who is called as provider and who is called as consumer who is called as provider who is called as consumer the application which is giving the services to other application that is called as provider and who is called as consumer the application which is accessing the services from other applications that is called as consumer okay we discussed about http protocol we discussed about http protocol so what will be there in the http protocol request response methods and status codes will be available and we discussed about xml and jaxb api what is a jaxb api java architecture for xml binding what is the purpose of that what is the purpose of that it is used to convert java object to xml and xml to java object and we are having binding classes what is a binding class the class which represents the structure of the xml that is called as a binding class what is a marshalling converting the java object to xml is called as marshalling what is unmarshalling converting xml to java object is called unmarshalling what is a json what is a json json stands for java script object notation okay it will represent the data in the form of key and value what is a json what is jackson jackson is a third party api which is used to convert java object to json data json object to json to java similarly we are having json api also what is the purpose of json api same thing all right then we discussed about provider development okay what is the meaning of a provider provider we are developing by using at the rate rest controller in the provider we use rest controller and we used request param and we used path variable we used path variable and we used request body also got it so now provider development provider development nothing but developing a rest api which will take the request and which will give the response what is at the rate rest controller what is at the rate rest controller it is used to represent our java class as a distributed component rest controller means controller plus response body method will return direct response to the client there is no ui pages what is request param what is the request param to capture the query parameters what is path variable to capture the path parameter what is request body to read the data from the request body and here we discussed about get mapping what is the meaning of get mapping to map our request to get request what is this post mapping mapping the request to post similarly we can go for put and delete mapping also if your method is responsible to update the data put mapping if your method is responsible to delete the data then delete mapping so once it is done we have tested our provider by using postman postman is a tool which is used to test our rest api then we discussed about swagger what is the purpose of a swagger swagger is used to generate the documentation for rest api okay so that documentation is very important for 
consumer because if a consumer want to access the provider the documentation is required swagger and swagger ui okay what is the swagger ui swagger ui is used to test our rest api then we discussed about consumer development who is a consumer who is a consumer the application the application which is accessing the services from the other application that is called consumer application how many ways we can develop the consumer consumer can be developed in three ways one is by using rest template another one is by using web client so here rest template supports only synchronous communication web client will support synchronous communication and asynchronous communication from now onwards no need to go for rest template already spring 6.x running in the market in the 5.x onwards they told that don't go for rest template go for web client right then we discussed about exception handling in the rest api so here we discussed about at the rate rest controller advice what is the meaning of rest controller advice i want to handle exceptions globally then there is a annotation called at the rate exception handler what is at the rate exception handler ha huh. for which exception which method should be executed that we are deciding by using exception handler right so we understood these concepts in this and we discussed about consumes and produces media types guys we discussed about media types in the provider what are the media types we discussed consumes and produces can you tell me what is the purpose of consumes and produces what is the purpose of consumes and produces consumes will tell consumes will tell in which format our rest api method can take the input what about the produces in which format it can provide the response then after we discussed about we discussed about content type and accept headers content type and accept headers what is the meaning of content type and accept headers what is the meaning of content type and accept header ha uh, content type will represent in which format client is sending the payload accept header will represent in which format client is expecting response from the api all right so we discussed about consumer development and we discussed about exception handling in the rest api okay now i want you people to develop one rest based application both the provider as well as consumer i want you to develop a provider as well as a consumer how we need to develop that is it is a simple contact application a simple phone book application i want you to develop a simple phone book application right phone book application in your mobile phone book is available you can save your contact you can save your friends contacts name phone number email id just three fields name email id and phone number so i want a functionality one application is phone book api phone book api in this api you should have a functionality to create contact you should have a functionality to create the contact and you should be able to update the contact i mean to say create contact view contacts view contacts and you can you can edit and update contact and you can delete contact okay so this is a api which you should have these four functionalities create contact view contacts edit and update the contact fourth one delete contact actually in the jrtp i thought of this one as a third mini project but there we are developing a blog application that mini project will develop here so that spring boot people also will get that clarity i want you people to develop this phone book api 
in the phone book api i want these four functionalities create contact view contact edit update the contact and delete the contact now i want to develop another application with the ui i want to develop another application with ui so this is my consumer application this is my consumer application in this consumer application in this consumer application we should have the logic with the ui okay ui page will be available to create the contact this ui application will communicate with this phone book api it will communicate with the phone book api this phone book api should communicate with the h2 database phone book application should communicate with the h2 database that is a in memory database that is a in memory database in this application we need to add swagger also documentation is required for our rest api so first we need to develop one rest api which contains saving the data retrieve the data edit the data update the data and delete the data that should be available as part of api that is a provider once a provider is available we will deploy the provider in the cloud then we will take that url we'll take that url based on that i need to develop my consumer application i need to develop my consumer application in consumer application repository will not be available where is the logic to save the data provider application consumer application will have the ui pages take the data from the ui give to controller controller will talk to service service will talk to rest api i want this mini project to be developed by using provider and consumer provider application will have crud operations with the database consumer will have the ui with that ui application we should be able to talk to provider application that means two projects we need to develop one project will act as a provider another project will act as a consumer clear i want you to do this as a task i want you to complete this project development this is the assignment for you so here everything you know how to develop the rest api you know how to work with swagger you know how to communicate with the h2db also you know now you need to develop the api and you need to develop the consumer application in the consumer application spring boot timely bootstrap i want we already developed a web application with the crud operation do you remember that guys so here if you see in our workspace we already developed one web application that is product application is available product application available add the record delete the record update the record retrieve the record all the functionalities available but the complete logic available in one project i think we already developed it let me show you that controller entity repository product which application that is not this time leap validation application no not this one as well one application i created with the time leap crud operations right not this not the student also guys ah huh, this one only time leap validation application what is the database i have configured for this h2 database perfect refresh run as boot application okay we already developed that crud operation application 
now I want to convert that into REST API. Run as boot application. Perfect. Application started. Go to browser localhost colon 8080. Yes. I'm able to get this product application. View all products. Any record is available? Not available. Now enter name, price, quantity. Click on save. Product saved. Click on view all products. One record is available here. Edit the record quantity from 5 to 12, 13. Save it. Product saved. Now quantity updated. Delete. Are you sure you want to delete? Okay. Record is deleted. No records found. We already developed our application by using Spring Boot and Timely. But here in this application, what happened is in the controller, we are directly talking to repository. But now what I need? What I need? Controller will talk to service. Service will talk to REST API. We need to create one REST API to perform CRUD operation. Then we need to develop our client application. Can you do that by tomorrow? By when you can complete that? By when you can complete this? This is a task for you. No, this is a task that I want you people to do it. I want you people to complete this task, guys. You know REST API development. You know REST client development. Guys, learning the course, attending the classes is different. Implementing the project is different. We are discussing REST API from last 20 days. So whatever we discussed, based on that only I am giving the task. If you can do this task, that means you understood REST API classes. If you are not able to do it, that means you are not able to understand the REST API. That is the important. How many days you need to do this task? Why? What is there? It is just a CRUD operation, man. I will give two days of time. But at least by this Saturday. At least by this Saturday, can you complete? Huh? Good. At least Saturday tak. One, two, three, four. I'm giving four days of time. In these four days, you need to complete this task, guys. You need to develop one. Already we developed a card operation application. But I have developed it as a single application. Now I want to separate it. API and client, provider and consumer. This is one mini project on the REST APIs. This is a mini project on the REST API. And simple, if you observe, if you observe in the Google, if you go to YouTube, already I explained that concept in my video. Okay, recent videos, if you see, are recent, not this. In the very recent, I added one video related to that. Huh. What is this video? Spring Boot REST API CRUD operations with MySQL database. So what you need to develop for the provider that already available as a video. How much time it took for that video? 32 seconds, 32 minutes of time to develop the provider. Consumer development will, consumer will have the UI. It may take 45 minutes of time. Hardly within two hours, we can complete that task. Hardly within two hours, we can complete that task. Within 32 minutes, I have completed that provider development. A video also available. Spring Boot plus a data JPA, CRUD operations with MySQL database in 30 minutes of time. Right. Then consumer development means UI pages we need to develop. For UI pages, you may take one hour of time. One hour plus 30 minutes, one hour, 30 minutes, one and a half hour is more than sufficient to develop that task. But I am giving you three days of time. I'm giving you 72 hours of time to complete two hours a task. To complete two hours a task, I'm giving 72 hours of time. By Saturday, I want everybody to show me this task. Provider development and consumer development. Got it? 
fine thank you guys with this i'm stopping tomorrow we'll continue